What is up everyone, it's your professional coffee mug holder here today, and I am here to bring you some very interesting news. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So. First of all, I have some good bad news for you guys, because if you know the game getting over it, you know it's not necessarily a walk in the park. Neither is it something you would want to be replaying multiple times. However, if you play it, you most certainly will. Well, unless you're a professional. In an article by VR Scout, we can see that getting over it in VR looks soul crushing in a good way. In a video shared on Reddit this past week, user Bezbro showed off a VR remake of the offbeat platforming game currently in development. Unfortunately, it'll be some time before the release is public. According to Bezbro, the team is currently working on a 3D version of the original map designed from the bottom up for VR. So, I personally, I, I don't think I'm going to be playing this for reasons that should be rather obvious. I don't want to necessarily uh, break my headset by throwing it against the ground. However, if any of you are up for the challenge, well, hopefully sometime in the future you will get to play Getting Over It in VR. And possibly want to cry. Okay, now for our main piece of news, the headliner, I would say. The Oculus Quest is moving to insane play spaces. Even though it's not necessarily the quest, it's the games within it. And the first example of this is Space Pirate Arena, which could be the most important VR game of the year. And that is because this game is going to require a minimum, minimum play space of 10 meters by 10 meters. That is insane. Which also means that there's an absolute 0% possibility that I will be able to play this inside my house. Meaning, yes, there will probably be a video of me playing VR outdoors once again. Now, as bad as it is to play VR outdoors because of the sun and it burning in your screens, it's actually not too bad when it's overcast. And it's usually overcast here. I will take the necessary precautions as usual, and I mean those of you that have been with the channel for a while now know that I absolutely love playing VR outdoors. I've done it on the beach, I've done it in the woods here, I've done it in front of my house, I've done it in my garden, I'd say we've probably done it everywhere by now. No, do not take that out of context once again, I saw you do it last time. This game is hopefully going to be a stepping stone for more games like this in the future. Now while this this game is going to be out of reach for so many people because, well, who has a play space 10 meters by 10 meters? However, it is going to be fantastic for places like VR arcades, which we do actually have a video on that I still need to edit from Poland. Because places like those will greatly benefit from games like these, because people will not be able to play them at home, so they will come to places like these VR arcades to play them there, and that is going to be fantastic. However, as a person who loves immersion, I love being able to run around in VR and physically move in instead of using the joystick. For me, every time I have to use the joystick, that's a piece of immersion lost. Now, I know not everybody feels this way, but for me, a huge play space is a huge increase in immersion, <laughs> especially if you can make the play space look like the game you're playing, because then you can touch physical objects and they're actually there in game, which is something VR arcades can do. Another benefit of them, which again, I'll be talking about in a different video. And that is another huge benefit of standalone VR headsets. With PC VR headsets, we are limited to the length of the wire, which is usually about five meters. Sometimes you can purchase extensions, but then other times you will lose out on bandwidth when you do that and your quality will decrease or even cause disconnects. On standalone VR headsets, we have the power of number one, wireless PC VR, number two, cloud PC VR in case you want to do that, or number three, completely standalone play, meaning no wires, meaning you should technically have no boundaries when it comes to your guardian system, which is why I usually just turn that thing off entirely. I know, stupid idea, but I love doing it. Which is why when I see a game like this coming out, I think, wow, the standalone potential is finally getting used up. Does that make any sense? Anyway, let me know what you think about this down below. Are you happy for this game or are you sad that you will not be able to play it? Or do you have a 10 meter by 10 meter play space? Well, let's move on to the next piece of news. This is a great piece of news for anybody that has friends because you can now invite your friends to your Oculus Quest game or any Rift game by using a web link, meaning it is now one step easier to get people into your game. And hopefully one day this will become an integration 
with Discord. That would be fantastic. It's been a long time coming, but Oculus has finally provided a way for players to invite friends to their VR games through a simple web link that can be shared by text, email, DM, or well, anywhere. This streamlines the action of meeting up with your friends for some virtual fun. For now, only some apps support this feature until more developers decide to get on board. So once again, it is a matter for developers to add this to their games, but I imagine this is a feature that most developers will want to have. And the easier we make it to join your friend's games, the better. Nobody wants to be hopping through loopholes and menus and trying to find their friends on their online list. I mean, I've seen people that have like 200 friends. Imagine scrolling through that list. I've got like three, so it's very simple, but I can imagine it's gonna make those people's lives a lot easier. Now for something about the AR mode we were talking about yesterday. If you guys haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out right up here. But just to jump through this really fast, there was something posted on my Reddit. Yes, I do check out the Reddit and it's a link to r slash Oculus Quest. And the user Simon993 has created a pass through arm scroll UI with the Oculus Quest 2. MRTK and low budget haptics wristband. Now this is super cool. And once again, this digs into what I hope would become the smart home pass through environment, which I talked about in yesterday's video. This looks absolutely incredible, and I cannot wait to be seeing more things like this show up, especially with the fact that Facebook is working on that armband that will read your muscle activity, and that will become hand tracking. We checked out an armband like that as well, right up here, the Mayo armband. But seeing more and more things done with this AR pass-through mode is absolutely amazing, and seeing little videos like this makes me really happy, so I decide to share them with you guys. You have chapters anyway, in case you're not interested in any specific part of this video. Now, for all you PSVR fans out there, and there seems to be quite a few of you, in one of my previous videos, I said people have been telling me not to get the PSVR because it's a waste of money, and it's just not very good, especially resolution-wise, and people came into the comments defending the PSVR, so now I'm genuinely on the lookout for a used PSVR to check out with the PlayStation 4 back there. And I have great news for those of you that are using your PSVR and enjoying it. Ulta, the developer behind the popular online VR game A Township Tale, wants to see the game come to PSVR. And I mean, it is an MMORPG, meaning the more platforms it can come to, the better, because more people will be able to meet up in it. The team's Boromi Un said as much in a recent interview with MCV. We would love to release a Township Tale on PSVR and other VR platforms slash storefronts, the developer said. And once again, I'm not surprised. The more platforms here, the better. Now I want to mention something that I saw that might interest quite a few of you, even though you didn't actually go to the event. As well as VCAT 6, which we went to in VR chat with the Discord, there is something called the Rec Olympics, which are the Olympics inside Rec Room. Now, this is something that I was notified about a little too late to actually go visit them, but I did still think it was really cool. You guys know I love talking about how VR allows us to go to places that we wouldn't normally be able to go to or visit people we wouldn't normally be able to visit in situations like the world is in right now. Well, the Rec Olympics are another step up from that. We all know VR can cause a lot of physical activity and creating the Olympics in VR, well, it's actually not as dumb as you might originally think because we now have full body trackers and I don't think Rec Room actually supports full body, but imagine something like the Olympics in VR chat with full body being a requirement. What stops you from actually doing the Olympics in VR chat, except for maybe cheating, but I still think that it would be a really cool event with full body trackers, just seeing everyone hang out, everyone meet up, actually see them doing the events in VR. It's another step up, and it's really, really cool. Seriously, put the smile on my face. Let me know what you think about this down below. Were you guys at the Rec Olympics? And what do you think about my full body Olympics idea in VR chat? Maybe we should make that a thing. And finally, Myst plans to launch for PC VR next week, with cross by confirmed. The iconic adventure game launches its latest remake on PC on August 26th. It's coming to Steam and Oculus Store, and yes, it'll have cross-buy with Quest on the latter. The studio confirmed as much on Twitter with the latest trailer that you can see below. This version of the game will have full support for PC VR headsets. In fact, you can already try the VR version on the Oculus Quest, where the remake launched as part of Quest 2's launch window in late 2020. 
So that is unbelievably exciting. We all know that PC VR titles usually have better graphics, usually have better fidelity than something on the Oculus Quest 2. And while it is fantastic to see standalone versions of games with cross-buy for people that don't have a VR-ready PC, but then maybe in the future they will have one and they want to upgrade their game. That is fantastic. But it's also great to see that these standalone and non-standalone games are working together to allow a larger group of people to play them together. I love seeing it. Anyway, that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you all have a fantastic day or night. If you guys are not yet part of our community, make sure to join that down below. We have a Discord down there. We have a Reddit down there where I want to see you posting your spice memes. If you guys would like to support the channel anyway, you should perform. We've got sick mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300% and merch that doesn't put a huge anger in your body. And if you guys want to be notified of fresh content coming up on the channel, make sure to subscribe on me through my balance. See you in the next video. Peace.